What if every single low frequency advocate was to leave our planet? By Nelia Benz. What if I told you that, say, next August, every person who actively advocate their own or other people's suffering, pain, anger, and fear will be removed from our planet, and that about 72% of the population would be gone from Earth? The 28% that are left behind would be those who choose a world without pain, suffering, anger, and fear. They would choose exploration, expansion, nurturing, sovereignty, conscious choice, joy, light, love, reconnection with each other and with Gaia and all her creatures, reconnection with our larger family from this universe. What would you do? Would you stay or would you go? And if you stayed, what would the earth look like if you wake up one day and only the people who are interesting and interested in you and your good works have a base frequency that is high and actively work to improve our life here on earth are with you. They don't resort or subscribe to aggression, torture, pain, suffering, victimhood, martyrdom or savior energies. Instead, they are the embodiment of empowerment, nurturing and kind actions, thoughtful and joyful about life, enthusiastic about our present and our future together ready to step into expansion of our collective group and the universe. What if I said that if this was going to happen, the Earth's population would go back to what it was in the late 1920s. Two billion people would stay on our planet. The rest would move to a different planet where they can continue with their suffering, pain, wars and torture of themselves and others. They would see no difference in their reality but would think that they are still on Earth. What if you had a choice to say yes or no to this split? What would you say? The Earth's population is indeed splitting, but up to now we agreed to do it very slowly. We agreed to take three generations to do it in. This conversation has been discussed at Wakud Me Now for the past two weeks or so, and within that conversation, one of the biggest concerns was, I want the split to happen, but will my loved ones choose the higher frequency experience? They are not awake, they are not working on themselves, and fully drink the socially accepted Kool-Aid. The thought of them leaving hurts me. Another concern aired to those I have shared this question with is, I want to make the 28%, but still struggle in negative BS. What if I miss the boat? It might not come as a surprise to realize that there are not 2 billion awake people on the planet. Not fully awake and working on themselves anyway. It might surprise you to know that the most powerful low frequency advocators on the planet are awake and actively engaged with their own or other people's suffering, pain, anger and fear. So, first misconception is awake equals high frequency. The other thing is that this split is not about religions, cultures or belief systems. What religion or belief system a person carries has nothing to do with whether they make it into the 28% or not. So what is the deciding factor? It is a choice, but how do we make it or how do we know what choice other people are making? The way in which we can better understand this is not so much think about a person being awake or asleep, or working on themselves or not. Think about it as the people who are part of the 72% are those who actively advocate their own or other people's suffering, pain, anger and fear. These are people who, if we collectively choose this outcome, would leave our planet. The key words here are actively advocate. It is hard to believe that so many people are very interested and keen on suffering and yet are gun lords or bullies. And yes, a lot of that is from a very popular false belief system stating that it is the only path to God. Hmm, something to think about. In this case, 
with their belief that pain and suffering takes them to God dictate that they are part of the 72%? It very much depends on the level of commitment to that belief. How many things a day do they do to make others suffer and themselves suffer in order to achieve this goal? Or is it just a way to explain and give meaning to their own pain because it gives comfort and respite? The difference between using this belief to give comfort and respite to themselves or others and actively torturing themselves or others in order to reach God is huge and basically illustrates who goes where. Having read this far, I ask you, in this hypothetical situation of the human experience splitting so radically, what would you choose and why? If you are worried about your loved ones, have the if conversation with them, and you'll get a good idea of who will stay and who will go. Ask your loved ones, what if I told you that next August, those people who actively advocate their own or other people's suffering, pain, anger, and fear will be removed from our planet? What would you do? Or you can ask them, what if I told you that from next August there will be no more pain, suffering, war, torture and drama in the world? How do you feel about that? Some will clearly brighten up and smile, saying it would be heaven on earth. Others will tell you it sounds boring and unexciting. Others will start defending the benefits of pain and suffering, wars and chaos. You will have your answer. Why am I, Inelia, asking you these questions? The choice is real, but August 2019 is not the issue here. Although, if as a collective group we do choose a physical split in frequency of experience that is fast, that's when it's scheduled to happen. But the choice you make has to be something you do, not just think about theoretically. This doesn't mean leave those you love or leave your job or abandon your house today. It means be truthful, genuine, be high frequency without apology and let the pieces fall wherever they want to. It does mean that you no longer lower your frequency or pretend you are someone or something else, a role, to make others more comfortable around you. It also means you start today. It also means that when you do fall into low frequency experiences, feelings, thoughts and emotions, you are aware that you do so and you do something about it. You use whatever tools you have learned to process and deal with them. You know you are committed to only amplifying high frequencies on our planet. Guilt goes out the door with the rest of the low frequency items in your life because you are taking action to stop indulging in negative stuff. And what about your loved ones? All I can say about your loved ones is that it is not a coincidence that the people around you are around you. When you stop pretending to be low frequency and stop indulging in low frequency stuff, you will be surprised at how many of them step up to that higher frequency. Lots. This is it. What did you choose? And how does the earth look like? with everyone around you only interested in peace, love, and the expansion of our high-frequency collective awareness and experience.